Hi, my name is Zach Behrman. I'm the Partner Engagement Manager at Xplenty. In this session, I'm going to talk about Salesforce org merges and how using an ETL platform for the data migration during an org merge can streamline the project and reduce the downtime for users. It also allows the opportunity for optimization of the new combined org. Uh, these are large-scale projects that require significant planning to successfully complete the merge with minimal downtime for the users during that cutover period. Um, you know, there's careful orchestration needed for configuration, uh, transfer of, of metadata, and uh, the data migration that all need to be addressed. Um, from a deployment standpoint, the data migration piece is typically going to be your longest running process during an org merge. And I'm going to focus here on, on that piece of the merge puzzle and how an ETL tool like Xplenty helps streamline that process. Um, we recently worked with a customer who had separate orgs for its international and domestic U.S. business units, and they were working towards a migration to Lightning under a new combined global org to move closer to that single source of truth and a unified operating model between both of these business units. Um, you know, the results of these two independent business units were two complex org structures and schemas and with a great need of uh, transformation to bring those schemas into alignment and successfully complete that merge. So when we talk about the aspect of orchestration that needs to be done around uh, an org merge, from the data migration standpoint, it comes from the aspect of dependencies between objects and also the reality that for certain objects to be migrated, there's potentially going to be workflows, triggers, and validation rules that are going to need to be suspended for a period of time. Um, so here's a quick look at the entity relationship diagram for standard sales objects in a Salesforce org. The interrelationship of these objects defines a need for a specific order of migration of these objects to successfully rebuild the same relationships from the retiring org to the newly created records and IDs in the surviving org. Um, a typical order for importing core objects would look something like this, accounts followed by campaigns, followed by contacts, etc. cetera. Um, so you can link these all together um, as they were in the previous org. So where that leaves us is after successfully migrating the records for these objects, we then need the new IDs that they generate in the surviving org to match them up with IDs from the retiring org to allow successful migration of records from the subsequent objects and keep those same relationships. Uh, this is something that can be done on a manual basis with something like Excel and using VLOOKUP to successfully map those necessary IDs. Um, prior to each uh, you know, batch you're loading through. Um, but an ETL tool like Xplenty can make that a, a dynamic process with much less manual effort, um, especially when it comes time for you know, uh, production deployment and going live. So I'm going to jump into Xplenty here and show you what a basic orchestration of that looks like uh, for migrating the opportunities from the retiring org. Um, but I'm also going to touch on some of the other aspects of the Xplenty platform that assisted in the project. So as opposed to utilizing CSV files with something like Data Loader for this effort, with Xplenty, you open up the option to using relational databases, uh, data lakes, or even going uh, directly org to org as Xplenty has native bidirectional support for Salesforce. Um, in the planning stages of an org merge, you're likely to be looking at you know, object by object going through the data with a you know, scalpel rather than a shovel to determine on a per object basis if you need to migrate all of the fields from that given object, uh, just some of them, or even if there is an opportunity to archive um, some older unneeded records and reduce your overall storage costs on the new combined org. Um, and that's not just restricted to the retiring org in this process. Um, the same effort can be made towards um, existing records in that surviving org before you actually do uh, the merge together to optimize your, your fully combined org at the end of this. Um, so Xplenty allows for not only the control of the specific records you'll be bringing across, but it can also be utilized for that archiving effort to move subsets of records from objects out to external storage for archiving um, and, and save on those storage costs. Um, the transformation layer in Xplenty even offers the capability for field level encryption as you move data from source to target. Um, so as you're archiving those records to an external system, um, you can maintain the necessary uh, security and compliance standards for those records, even if there were, say, you know, PII that you're pulling out of them on a, on a, a record level. Um, so when we're looking at the packages here, for the purposes here in this example, uh, in place of the flat files that you'd use with Data Loader, I'm going to utilize a Postgres database to create a dynamic workflow 
to uh, migrate the opportunity records. So from uh, the retiring org into a Postgres table um, and then up into Salesforce and then back. So we have those record IDs available to continue down um, this orchestrated flow um, and build those relationships without a lot of manual lift at the time we're actually going to put this into production. So you'll see several packages here around opportunities, such as the load, the pull down, um, validation. Um, we'll look at those, but I'm going to start in this workflow package here, as this is actually the, the orchestration of these other packages for loading in the opportunities. So in this example, I've already run a previous process to uh, bring the desired subset of opportunities out of the retiring org into a Postgres table. And the workflow you see here is going to load those in to the surviving Salesforce org, uh, retrieve those new IDs that are created to build relationships for subsequent objects. Um, and then we have an optional step here that can actually go and, and do a quick comparison and validation to see if those records are actually showing up in the surviving org. Um, you know, you can build in um, a, a, an error tolerance for these jobs of how many errors are acceptable in uh, Salesforce before we would define it as a failed job that would notify you. And then you can quickly go look into this table and see what records you may want to reattempt with um, and address why they failed. Um, so first we'll look at this opportunity load. Um, so we're going to go into the package here. All right, uh, so what we have going on in this opportunity load package is the first at the top is this uh, Postgres table we have that are opportunities from the retiring org. Um, we go through, we just have a retiring schema and an opportunity table. Um, you do have a where clause here. So, you know, these packages can be converted when, you know, you're, you're typically looking at a, a snapshot of, of data that you're bringing through, whether that is in flat files or whether it is, uh, you know, in something like a relational database here, a snapshot that you're going to load in during that cutover period. And then there likely is, um, you know, some new records and, and changes in, in a small gap in between there potentially. Um, and you can go through um, and utilize a, a the same package, but build out those those where clauses to load those new records um, after the the cutover process is complete. So as we go through here, um, we'll look Xplenty, uh, you know, goes against this table, um, gives you all the available uh, fields in the schema. These are the same fields available in the object on the Salesforce side. Um, you know whether you do this when you are, you know, loading into a, a Postgres table or going direct Salesforce to Salesforce or, or anything like that. Um, or here when we're going from the Postgres table into Salesforce, um, we can go through and actually uh, get granular about what fields we're bringing through. So back to that aspect of, you know, if you're identifying specific fields that are not of value or in use, um, you don't have to carry those across into this process and you certainly don't have to carry them across um, to the uh, surviving org if you're, if you're not going to utilize them. Um, but for the purposes here, um, we're looking at the majority of, of these fields being brought across. So you get a little data preview down here as well, so you can see what these fields are. And we've got some you know, example data that's populated into these Salesforce orgs. Um, so I'm gonna click save here. So now we have our, our opportunity flow of, of our existing opportunity records from the retiring org. Um, and now what we need to do is uh, map in those related IDs. So um, you know, to this opportunity in the, you know, org that is being retired, um, there's relationships to what user is tied to the opportunity, what campaign, what account. Um, those users, campaigns, and accounts have the equivalent on the surviving org side, but they have new record IDs um, that we need to be associating with. Uh, with. So uh, we'll look here, uh, we're going to do this through a series of joins, and joins are very declarative in the Xplenty interface. Um, so we have a user map table here that we've gone through and you'll see we have surviving org schema here and a user map. And then when we jump over to the schema, um, you'll see we have just a couple of selected fields here. So when we are running these processes, um, we have a custom object that is actually populating um, the record ID from the retiring org um, into each of these records so they can go back and be used for reference. And then this uh, like waterfall package is actually going to pull these back down. So you, you have these tables generated in the process that you can go and do these joins on subsequently in each of these packages and, and take away that manual aspect of, you know, using Excel on a flat file and VLOOKUP and, you know, uh, correcting these through each pass and then loading them up and doing the same process over and over. Um, so we have our new ID here, and then we have our retiring org ID custom uh, field that is uh, on the surviving org side. We know what the ID is um, for a, a given user that would be reflected in that retiring org's um, opportunity record. So 
click Save there. And now we quickly go and add a join between these two data sets. So we're looking, um, we've got a left join. We want all the, the opportunities coming through. Um, and then we want to take a look at who was the owner uh, of that opportunity. And so we have our owner ID. And that's going to relate to the retiring org ID custom uh, field of the users. And then we relate those together. And then we move on to the next step here. So the next step, we need to associate campaigns. And we have the same thing of a previous data set um, that has been pulled into this uh, you know, surviving org schema in Postgres in a campaign table. And we're doing uh, the same aspect here. We have a retiring org ID, and we have the new ID that's been generated in the surviving org. We're going to go through, do the same very fast join, um, and subsequently throughout this, you know, we keep going on. Now, the, you know, this is um, a, a, a very limited look at the transformation capabilities of Explenny and, and this use case. Um, certainly, you know, in, in the overall use case I was presenting where these two uh, large business units with a lot of customization on their platforms, there's other transformation that needs to um, occur as you go through and make um, the, the uh, schema from each of uh, these objects and their fields match up to what is desired in the surviving combined org. Um, and all of that can be done um, through uh, the explaining platform and our, our standard uh, transformations that we have that are declarative. There's also a select component that you can go through. Um, and there's a lot of different functions you can utilize as well um, to, to uh, you know, cleanse and, and shape that data to exactly what you need to load on the other side. And it can do that all on the fly. So it's a repeatable um, dynamic package that you can carry through, um, you know, these multiple aspects of, you know, UAT testing in a sandbox, and then you know dealing with any kind of idiosyncrasies that you're going to have um, when you move to production. You can modify it. You can you can handle those through the platform. So after we do all these joins, um, we do have this mapping alias select component here. Um, and basically, what's been done in here is we have all of our, our existing fields that are pulling through and they're aliased. And then right at the end here, you'll see you know we have the user map ID to user ID, campaign map ID to campaign ID and account map to account ID. And what's been done in the select component is I've eliminated uh, the uh, retiring orgs IDs from here. So when we go to actually map the schema onto the Salesforce object side, um, we're not looking at, at multiple um, user IDs uh, in this data set or anything like that. So they're, they're dropped out of the schema entirely and we only have the specific ones that we're going to use. And then when we're going to uh, you know, complete the load itself, um, our target connection is our surviving Salesforce org. We're going to our opportunity object and doing an insert. Um, you, we do uh, use the bulk API here, so you can do batch sizing up to 10,000 to run it through. And this is the error tolerance I was touching on as well, um, where you can determine how many errors are acceptable before Xplenty notifies you that this is a failed job. Um, and we have a variety of like hooks and notifications that can send out to you. So, you know, Likely you're going to be very you know, hands-on in this process and, and watching it as it goes. Um, but depending on you know, the, the size of the org that's uh, being migrated and the number of records, um, some of these can be longer running jobs and uh, you, know, you may be doing other things um, for the project while that migration is happening. I want to be notified as soon as there's an issue past your, your own error tolerance that you have. Um, and then, uh, you know, you have the aspect, you know, we're going insert only here, but um, again, when we're talking about, you know, any changes that may have happened um, between the, the snapshot um, out through the cutover window, um, you can go through and do upserts, um, and you could convert this whole package to an upsert process that's looking um, either at, you know, the, the uh, newly created Salesforce IDs, or in, or in this instance, if you're upserting, you know, those uh, records, you can go on that retiring org ID custom field and uh, key off of that and do any upserts and then bring any newly generated records through or changes to the records that um, were post snapshot that you had. And then from there, um, you know, you can quickly uh, click this autofill. It'll match up um, input input fields and destination fields if they have the same naming conventions. Um, certainly there is the, the likelihood that, especially with custom fields, you have uh, different naming conventions um, between the uh, two orgs that you're trying to bring into alignment. Um, so you can go and, and define these um, as needed. And then when we go and look at the final page here, um, we're taking, you know, it, in my sample data set here, it's the same user that is the owner that created by last modified by, but you can certainly pass through joints for all of these different aspects and, and identify each of them. Um, and then we are going and here's the step that populates the data um, in, that eventually will populate the data into a table for subsequent loads. We're taking 
our retiring opportunity ID, which is the original ID from the retiring org, and we're populating that into a custom field retiring org IDC, which you saw used in these joins throughout. And then we also have the uh, account ID that we've pulled in to map to from you know, the new surviving org and what account is going to align to it. Um, so when we're done there, we click save. Um, we have a save and validate. This will go through and, and check any of the you know, uh, transformation operations that are being done, syntax, test the connections, all of that. Um, and then from there, you can do a, a save and run job um, or you can um, wait and add this into an orchestrated package um, like we're talking about. Um, so, uh, so that's the that's the load end of things. Now I'm going to go back to this uh, workflow and show you kind of how that uh, populates into this dynamic package that is going to give you the all of these tables that you're looking at here, where you can pull um, and map the campaign IDs, the account IDs, any dependencies that they have or relationships that they have um, to other objects in the new org. So the next step in the workflow is this opportunity retrieve. Um, we'll go in here and you know, I've titled this opportunity pull down. Um, so we're going to open this up and we'll take a quick look here. So here our, our source rather than a Postgres table is uh, Salesforce org itself. And so this is the surviving Salesforce org. This is um, uh, you know, when the load has occurred. So uh, one thing I'll jump back to here and show you is that you have, um, uh, you can set this on failure, on completion, on success. So you can determine how this flow happens, but basically when this uh, package completes and the load is it will trigger up uh, this opportunity pull down package. So we know that those records have been pushed through into Salesforce and they're going to generate those new IDs. Um, so here uh, we're going through, now we're going to look at the opportunity object in the uh, surviving Salesforce org. And we're going to uh, use this where clause to only specifically look for records that the retiring org ID uh, custom field is not null. So we know it is a record that came from our retiring org. And that's uh, the only things we're going to need IDs from and, and cut down on the uh, amount of uh, uh, records we're actually bringing into this table. Then from there, um, I'm going through in this process and I'm bringing through you know, a, a full um, load of all of these uh, records that have gone through. So if, you know, if there's specific comparisons that wanna be done, you can compare on every field that's there, um, but certainly you could do something as simple as only using those two fields um, that uh, we're using in those joins where you just need the ID and then you need the retiring org ID custom field um, to match up on and join on. So we go through and save that and then going into the destination is very simple. Um, we have our, our org merge database, um, we have a surviving uh, schema, and then we have an opportunity table there. And for this, which we're just going and uh, doing appends, and then we are going through and a uh, similar thing, just auto-filled, um, we're going through and populating all of these fields into a brand new table. You do not have to create this table um, in your uh, database ahead of time. The XPlenty platform can do this. So when you go through and, and kind of build out these packages and go to run them, um, this is something you can queue up this workflow and it will it will build this table and, and have it available there. Um, certainly though, if you are going to take that route, you do need to have your um, intended naming conventions available and know what your uh, field names are going to be if you're looking to keep building future packages that are then going to um, you know, join back against this to get those new IDs as we did in that original package. So we have that, that will populate those tables we we're using. And then if we look back um, in this workflow, we also have um, you know, kind of an optional step of a validation rule here. Um, so we can, you know, after both of those complete, it will trigger validation and this utilizes both the tables that were created. So um, you have the opportunities from the retiring org in a Postgres table, you have the opportunities from the surviving org in a Postgres table that have that custom retiring org ID, um, and then we quickly join them together on the original ID and the retiring org ID. Um, and then from there, we can go through and, and do things like make a case statement to um, identify whether it's been processed or not, just matching off whether the ID exists. Um, but certainly you can do um, deeper levels of validation between the records and do spot checks. And then we'll load that back um, into the existing uh, retiring opportunity table. So then if we wanted to um, go and say, rerun this package again, um, we can go through and use that where clause in the initial package and say, you know, only pull records where the has been processed field um, is showing as false. So, you know, where we had those error records, we can try that rerun and we don't have to kind of, you know, rebuild the wheel as far as the whole package goes here. If there was, um, you know, some small issue that they, we were able to, um, you know, navigate on the database side or whatever it might be. 
then we go back and, and look at the, the packages. So back to my initial point, you know, beyond just this aspect of you need these record IDs to um, successfully create relationships, as you go to load certain objects, um, there are, are likely existing, um, you know, workflows, triggers, validation rules that are going to need to be, you know, suppressed, paused during the time that you're loading. Um, when you have, you know, these specific set packages doing this process, you can start to establish um, your cutover window and what it's going to look like for when you need to have those things shut off and how soon can you get them back on um, in your process to get users back into a fully working state on the new combined org. And a key component of that is actually getting an understanding of how long uh, each of these jobs take to run, uh, which you can do in the Xplenty platform because we have a, a job history and you can see upon completion, you can get an idea of the uh, you know, run times that it actually took to run individual processes. Um, so you can go and iterate through uh, dry runs of uh, you know, the, the full process from end to end, you know, loading the, the objects in the order that they need to and end up with um, kind of a map out of, of the timing, um, you know, aligning specific packages to when specific um, workflows, triggers, validations need to be shut off and um, having clear alignment there. Um, and it'll come with the same alignment that you'd see when you're looking at timing from doing, you know, the, the configuration of the platform, metadata deployment, um, you know, the, the packages that you're using from third party providers, things along those lines. So uh, thank you for taking the time for watching. Um, I hope this has been informative. Obviously, I've just scraped the surface of, of what's involved um, in, in a successful org merge here, um, but certainly related to this tooling, um, it's something that can, you can bring you um, a lot of flexibility, save you a lot of time, um, open up opportunities to spend time on you know, optimization and refactoring that, that you may have not had if, if you're going the, the more manual route and, and just have to focus on that lift and shift effort. Um, but certainly um, if you have any questions about this or, or you have any um, needs around moving data in and out of Salesforce for any reason, um, you know, please reach out, uh, happy to talk about it and see how we you know, might have some shared success in your efforts.